this is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Morgan Neville, director of Won't You Be My Neighbor, the documentary about Fred Rogers, which is coming out here, I guess, in mid-June? Yeah, June 15th in Seattle. Um, gosh, this is, there's so much to talk about here, but I'm going to try and keep it as condensed as possible. Uh, the first thing I was just kind of curious is, what brought you to the decision to make this documentary? What was it about Fred Rogers that personally attached you? Because there's so much... Yeah. There's so many things that you could be interested in with this guy, um, especially stuff that I completely forgot mm -hmm. looking back on how political he was and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but what was it specifically for you that you were like, I want to find out more about Fred Rogers? Um, really, it was me wanting to spend more time with him. <laughs> it's a pretty good reason. Yeah. That, um, you know, one night I somehow ended up on YouTube late at night watching, going down the rabbit hole of Mr. Rogers and watching some speeches he gave, like commencement addresses mm -hmm. and um, his Emmy Lifetime Achievement Award speech, which is amazing. And just feeling like this is a voice I don't hear in our culture anymore. It's not like I just nostalgically wanted to go back and revisit that, which wasn't, that was part of it. But the real motivation was I think we need voices like this in our culture. Yeah, I would agree with you. <laughs> so it was just purely that instinct of like, how do I be the catalyst for change yeah, or something? Yeah, and try and just, you know, use, give him a platform to kind of reintroduce that voice and start more of a conversation about the value of being a good neighbor. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. that's a phenomenal reason. When I like look at this picture or this film from the outside, there are definitely things that like practically I wonder about, like, so you've won an Academy Award. Um, that's got to be a lot of pressure when you go out to make your next film. I wonder about that cliche of like, never meet your heroes because they let you down. Were there like concerns heading into this that you'd find out that, oh no, Fred Rogers really was blank or something like that? Or like, were you just like so confident going into this film? You're like, this is going to be a slam dunk. Um, I never think anything is a slam dunk. Um, but I had done enough research and talked to enough people that knew him that I didn't think I was going to find any skeletons in the closet. Um, but still, he was somebody who was actually much more dimensional than I expected, you know, because kind of the cliche of Mr. Rogers is he's the classic two-dimensional kind of simple character who babysits kids on TV. Totally. Um, but you realize that he, the actual Fred Rogers was actually more impressive than Mr. Rogers. Even even ignoring that, like just looking back at some of the stuff you showed that was presented in Mr. Rogers, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, I totally don't remember this. I need to go back and rewatch yeah. this because there's like assassination. That was not a topic I would have imagined yeah. would be on a show like and, that. And I mean, we mentioned a lot of it in the film. There was even more. I mean, there, much more. He did things on AIDS and nuclear holocaust. I mean, really, this is a kid show for kids two to six years old. And nobody's done done that before yeah. or since. Yeah. I mean, it was the only show who ever that's ever really tackled things like that for kids. And um, but for him, you know, because he had a, a graduate degree in childhood development, and his big philosophy was that kids know when bad things happen, and mm -hmm. if you tell kids, don't worry about it, that they are too smart to not worry about it. And if you let those fears fester, then it's going to create other problems. So the most respectful thing to do is not condescend to children, but to speak Profound at them. Profound idea, you know, for sure. Yeah, exactly, because people condescend to children all the time. Mm -hmm. So his idea was, I'm going to let them know that the world is a complex place, and I will speak to them in age-appropriate terms, but I'm not going to pretend that everything is just you know cupcakes and rainbows. That's pretty awesome. Do you think it was the fact that he was so earnest, so who he was, both on TV and off, that sort of led to that weird um, wave of rumors that have sort of been created over the years, you know, whether he was gay or that he was in the army or blah, blah, yeah, tattoos. Yeah. What was, like, what is it about him that just sort of fundamentally brought that out? Because, like, most of the time someone gets, like, a death rumor and that's it. But, like, all these weird things have been created over the years of a guy who seems like the nicest man yeah. <laughs> ever. And I think because Fred was so just different, like there aren't other people like him. And so we, our natural human instinct is to explain it away, to say that there must be 
something underneath that that's nefarious or you know um, complicated. And I think the big the big reveal of the film is that he is Mr. Rogers. That's great. Yeah, he's just awesome. He's just an awesome guy all around. Yeah. Um, and it's it's funny. I mean, you were asking before about kind of expectations, um, particularly when I went to Pittsburgh because he was from Pittsburgh. Mm, he made the yeah, show yeah. there. He never left. And, um, you know, he's not just a hometown hero in Pittsburgh. He's, he's a god in Pittsburgh, you know, that people really revere him. And um, the thing I got the most when I told people I was working on a film about Mr. Rogers was, don't screw this up. No. <laughs> <laughs> Threats that if you did something to harm his You're going to destroy my childhood, so please don't. Um, That's funny. So I'm not here to destroy your childhood no. because Fred wasn't, you know. And, and in a way, I think... I'm here to help your adulthood <laughs> because, oh, yeah. because the thing is, even though the show is made for kids, there was usually an adult in the room watching at the same time. And when you go back and revisit what he was talking about, you realize he was always talking at two different levels, you know, to a child, but also yeah. to the other person in the room. I mean, there's so much packed into this film and a lot of the stuff, like, as I said, I don't remember, I remember like, you know, those special weeks that he did, the assassination stuff, like all these various topics on the show. But for you, as you sifted through all this stuff, what was the thing that surprised you the most that you discovered about Fred Rogers or the show for that matter? I mean, I mean, when I was still deciding to make the film, I went to the Fred Rogers Center which is in his hometown of Latrobe, Pennsylvania, and it's where his archives are. And um, and I'd heard about the special he had done in the wake of Bobby Kennedy's assassination. Yeah. In fact, two days after the assassination. And Kennedy was killed on a Wednesday. The funeral was to be televised on Saturday morning nationally. And Fred said, children are going to watch this, and I need a show on the night before wow, that's amazing. to help process this and understand how to talk about it. And the show aired one time and it had never been seen again. And when I got there to the center, I said, can you please let me see it? And they put it up and I watched it. That's amazing. And at the end of that special, I said, I can make a film. <laughs> I knew. I, I mean, that was, everything was there. All, any reservations I had about depth or dimension or tension or any of that were erased. You know, I knew that I wanted to spend the time making this film. One of the interesting things that this this made me think about was because of a recent discovery on my behalf of uh, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, which is, I guess, the spiritual successor based on the character that he created. I don't know how much you know about it. I know how much the family is involved with it, but it made me wonder sort of what is the perspective, presumably, because this would come up during the process of making this film, of something like that, since he was so careful in crafting this show for so many years, and now it's like out of his hands and someone else is handling it, yeah. as well as just what do you think his legacy is now? I, I mean, you definitely said, like, this is somebody who we need more of in the world, sure. but what is sort of the perception of Fred Rogers in the modern culture? Well... I think there's a reevaluation going on about this. This will definitely play a part in that. And this sure. film will play a part, and this is the 50th anniversary. And I think, if anything, we've all been blown away by how hungry people are to revisit a character like Fred, because in a way, he's a advocate or a totem for the kinds of things people feel are under threat in our culture, which is civility, kindness, kindness, neighborliness. You know, these things that he becomes an advocate for when we have very few advocates for kindness in our culture uh, and understanding. So I think that's a big part of it. You know, I, I have to admit, I haven't watched a lot of Daniel Tiger's It's actually neighborhood. charming. So, like, like before I even realized he was associated with it, I was like, this is an actually kind of interesting children's show. So it definitely added a whole new depth to it for me. It is. I mean, it's not his show and there's never going to be another Mr. Rogers but at least, you know, honoring some of his ideas of kind of pace and um, childhood development. You know, I know it's it's produced by the company he started, mm. but it's not, you know, it's not him. Right. Um, yeah. But, you know, where is, you know, what's the legacy of Fred Rogers? You know, I think a question I get sometimes is, you know, who's the new Mr. Rogers? 
Well, there isn't any. Yeah, that's a tough one. And another question I get is, you know, what would Fred think about this? And something Joanne Rogers said to me is, um, that's Mrs. Rogers. <laughs> she said, um, Fred's not here and he can't answer that question. So you shouldn't even try to ask that question. And I also think the whole premise is kind of faulty, that there always has to be somebody to replace something else. Yeah. Why can't he just live as a unique individual that inspires other people? To well, sure. But I think what she was getting at, and what I think the real answer is, is that the real question is, what are you going to do? What's your part in creating a good neighborhood? And that millions of us grew up yeah. watching Mr. Rogers, and he imparted something to each of us. So if we can remember that and activate that and think about that, then that's what the legacy is. Yeah. You know, it's it's all of us. It's not uh, just that I, one thing. I just learned apparently that uh, apparently almost all of the show is on Amazon to rewatch. So it definitely makes me want to go back and <laughs> rewatch it because I did not realize what was going on there. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure how many episodes. There are at least a hundred episodes up there. I think to in total he did almost nine hundred episodes. Wow. But um, they, I think they might be adding more. I mean, I think there is a little bit of a. Mr. Rogers I, I have a feeling happening. some of those ones like the assassination one probably will be safe for the archive and stuff like that. But yeah. nevertheless, it's just the content in general seemed amazing. Um, I want to talk about interacting with his family. They all were very fantastic in the film and they definitely love talking about him. But is it something that you always worry about on a project like this mm -hmm. where you have to engage with the family? This not that there's necessarily, as you said, anything nefarious about him or anything, but like this is someone who's beloved to them. You don't want to in any way impact their memories of him or, I mean, how do you sort of dance that dance? I mean, there were, I think part of it is establishing a sense of trust at the beginning. So when I told them at the beginning that I don't want to make a biography of Fred Rogers as much as I want to make a film about his ideas. And, and when they decided to trust me, because I said, look, if I'm going to make this film, you can't control anything. You have to trust me 100%. And they thought about it. And when they agreed to do it, if they were going to trust me, they were going to do it without reservation. So they kind of <laughs> threw up in their arms and like, we're going to do whatever we can. His sons, who do an interview, um, great interviews in the film, um, had never done an interview before, ever, talking wow, about their that's father. That's amazing. And, and this shows just how wise Mrs. Rogers is, is that when we started making the film, she said to me, Morgan, don't make him into a saint. Mm. So I think it wasn't being protective in the sense of um, somebody's going to dig up the dirt on him. I think it was almost a sense of if you're too loving and too hagiographic, you're going to put him in the same two-dimensional box that everybody else puts him in. Mm, and that does him a disservice. Yeah. It actually does all of us a disservice. And it might make it yeah. a little too saccharine sweet for some people to really appreciate and just be like, and that's part of maybe yeah. why they create all those rumors is that people are like, oh, he can't really be like that. So, But also you realize that he struggled and he had insecurities and fears. And in that way, he was very human, you know, <laughs> that that was really what they wanted people to understand, that he was a real person. You know, because I think that's the question everybody always has. Yeah. Is this guy for real? Very cool. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for doing this, Morgan. Uh, the film is Won't You Be My Neighbor. Definitely fantastic, worth watching. I agree with you. We need more people like Fred Rogers in our world now these days. And uh, wish you the best of luck with yeah. everything. Thanks for having me. Stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's like don't even try to buy the sound. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me